What's up guys, my name is Sawyer Hartman and today I'm super excited to make this video because it means exactly one thing. It means that I've found a brand new favorite vlogging camera for 2017, or at least my new favorite, but I will be keeping my opinion my own until the very end. So this is a review of my top four favorite vlogging cameras that I've used to shoot the last eight months of daily vlogs. I've tested out almost every camera on the market as well as own most of them and daily vlogging has taught me one thing. I need a reliable camera that has a very specific set of features for myself. If you don't care about cameras, if you don't care about making daily vlogs of your own, this video might not be for you. But if you want to know good vlogging cameras for your next year of daily vlogging, you have hit the jackpot because here we go. So by absolutely no means do you need all this gear to make a cool, good, entertaining vlog. I've actually found that I really only need the bare essentials to make a vlog. Now for my own personal style, if I want to take that vlog and start making it more artsy, there's a couple things that I've found that I really need to look for. Slow motion, time lapses, good image quality, good audio quality, and a camera rig that I can like hold and is just reliable. Something that's sturdy, something that doesn't take forever to set up, something that gets the job done. So for example, I'm never gonna take my red camera vlogging because I'll probably miss all of those little intimate shots that make vlogs feel like such real life. If you have something like this, it takes forever to set up and before you know it, you've missed the shots. Okay, so now I wanna show you the cameras that I actually use for vlogging. It is beautiful though, I know. So after much trial and error over the last eight months, I wanna introduce you guys to my four favorite vlogging cameras from 2016 moving into 2017. We have the Canon 1DX Mark II, the absolute cinematic powerhouse. We have the new mirrorless Canon M5, which is like the baby brother to the 70D, but as we might find out later, it might be the big brother. The OG, like the old faithful vlogging camera is the Canon 70D. And then the micro guy you've seen a lot of daily vloggers have, the Canon G7X Mark II. So I do wanna point out, although all of these are all Canon cameras, this isn't a branded video by Canon. I actually did used to vlog on a good bit of Sony's. I vlogged in China on the A7S Mark II, which got replaced by the 1DX. And then I was vlogging on the RX100 Mark IV and Mark V, which is kind of comparable to this, but better. Uh, but both of those got dropped and fell. You know, look, I, I really like Canon. Canon's like my favorite camera company. If you like Sony, then you like Sony. If you like Canon, you like Canon. Like you can't help it, right? In my own opinion, when I use Sony cameras, I tend to feel like I'm using more of a computer than a camera and it just kind of slows down my process. But both Canon and Sony are like amazing companies and both of their cameras will take amazing pictures. It is really important to note though that there is no perfect camera. I mean, your conditions, your subject, your location, like all of that is going to greatly influence and sway the gear that you pack into your camera bag. I mean, if you were going to hike Mount Everest, you wouldn't bring flip-flops, even if you were a surfer. You bring the gear that you need for that shoot and the tasks of that shoot. So, with all that being said, let's dive into this. So in general, when I'm packing my bags for a day of vlogging, there's a couple things I'm going to be looking for in my camera. The first thing I'm gonna be looking for is image quality over price. I wanna know how good of a picture can I get out of my camera without breaking the bank. Secondly, I'm looking at size over usability. And what I mean by that is this small camera is definitely smaller than this camera, but this camera does so much more that it's better. This camera is pretty big. This camera is massive, but this camera does so much more that after you put the microphone on this camera, it starts to get as big as that camera and you might as well have just taken that camera. When you're daily vlogging like I am, you have very limited space in your camera bag, so it's very important to make sure that real estate in your camera bag is really being used up by gear you're actually gonna use. The third thing I'm gonna be looking for are the features the camera can give me that will allow me to enhance the actual production value of my vlog. By this, I mean time lapses, slow motion, HDR, whatever it is. What can the camera do that other cameras can't that I can use in my vlogs to give it a special creative edge? The fourth thing I'm gonna be judging these cameras on is audio quality. Does the camera have a really good built-in microphone? Is it usable in windy situations? Or do I need a big microphone on the top of it, like sitting on the camera that's recording this? All of these cameras bring a lot of purpose and production value to my videos, but I don't know if any one of these does everything in total. So, with all of that in mind, let's take a look at these four cameras. So the Canon 1DX Mark II has quickly become my absolute favorite all-around camera from the group. It's strong, it's reliable, the image is sharp, it's amazing quality, it shoots slow motion, it literally, like, uh, the list could go on. This camera also has a 20.2 megapixel full frame image sensor, which means this camera can shoot 60 frames a second in 4K, 120 frames a second in 1080p, and like the quality of it is just beautiful. It is literally unrivaled by any other camera in this lineup. 
but it also is in price and weight. This camera weighs three times heavier than the M5, twice as much as the 70D, and almost four times as much as the G7X. This camera also costs a starting price of just under $6,000. Now, now I know to a lot of people this is just a dream camera, but this still might not be the camera for you. I'm gonna list through the good and bad features of this camera as well as the other ones as well and allow you to make a decision on your own. Number one, it has super fast, insanely accurate face tracking autofocus, which for a Canon pro level DSLR is like unheard of and it completely changed the game. You can vlog on this camera with a 16 to 35 lens. You absolutely can. People think you're crazy, but you absolutely can. Also, even though it's a really big camera, Canon did a genius thing and put the microphone on the front instead of the side. And by some small miracle, it's amazing. I have not found any need for a big bulky microphone to go on top. That's the only reason that this is an actual thought that you could vlog on this. The ability to shoot 4K 60 frames, 120 frames in 1080, as well as take amazing photographs at 14 frames a second, it just kind of makes this camera unmatchable in terms of quality. It's just unparalleled, it's amazing. And then to top all that off, it has like usable 25,000 ISO. If you're shooting at 16,000 ISO, you have zero grain at 25,000, I still put it in vlogs, no one even notices. So if you didn't know what that means, basically you can shoot in the dark with it. And the battery life is insane. But again, I say no camera is perfect. The screen doesn't flip out, so when you're in front of the camera vlogging, you have absolutely no idea what's in frame, what's in focus, or if your shot's even properly exposed. The weight also does take a huge toll on you, so if you're not fully committed to like shooting ridiculous quality vlogs, and you're not committed to working out one arm all day, this probably isn't the vlogging camera for you because it gets really heavy. Because it's a pro-level DSLR, it actually doesn't have any image stabilization at all inside the camera, so if you're in a car, in a dune buggy, in a helicopter, like, it gets very shaky. I've heard many reasons why they don't put image stabilization in this. I think it's to like optimize the image quality. Usually with this type of thing, you'd put it on a steady cam. But for vlogging, that can get very tedious. <clears throat> Not that I need to tell you, but cost is a huge reason that this camera isn't for vlogging. Even though it costs $6,000, once you get it, that's just half of it. Because you still have to take risks with the camera in order to get really interesting, cool shots. And as I've found, the camera costs so much, you're a lot less daring with it. You're not gonna put it in front of a train or like hang it over a boat. Like you're very, you're a lot more careful. And that doesn't always translate to better footage. And finally, the sheer beauty and size of this camera, you're guaranteed to ruin any intimate moment you're filming by someone asking you what kind of camera is that is. Holy smokes, that's a big camera. But if you're okay with the attention, that maybe it's for you. The Canon 70D is like the old faithful of the group. YouTubers have used these things forever and gotten awesome stuff out of them, but Casey Neistat really made them popular this year when he paired them with a Gorillapod as well as a Rode mic, like the one on top of my 70D that's recording this video. The Canon 70D has like always been the safe choice of vlogging for me. I find it very easy to film on it. It's reliable, gives me a good image quality. However, it doesn't have a lot of the features I need. It doesn't have slow motion. It doesn't have time lapses. It's not full frame but for some reason, it's always felt the most reliable. It's not as expensive as the 1DX, so I don't have to baby it. I can just throw it in the car and go. But yet, it's still bigger than the G7X, so it still feels a little professional. Shooting with the 70D in low light is an absolute nightmare. The flip out screen makes your eyes go over here and look super weird when I should be staying focused on you. Again, the mic is on the side of the camera, which means you need a massive big microphone on top, essentially making the camera almost as big as the 1DX. It's not a full frame image sensor as well. So a lot of those Canon L series lenses are gonna be cropped in a little bit because of the sensor size. The camera has no image stabilization, which is kind of a big problem for a consumer camera because the people using this camera probably aren't going to be big professionals. They need help, they need the stabilization, they need a little bit of assistance. Same goes for vlogging. If I'm in the back of a car, you don't want shaky footage. I did say this was like one of my favorite cameras though, so I don't wanna just talk bad about it. This is a couple of the features that made it so reliable and such a go-to for so many creators. It's affordable, so you can take a ton of risks while shooting and still get a good image. I'll knock the 70D all I will, but it does have an amazing image quality. When you're daily vlogging, you're like moving so quickly from one location into the other. A lot of times, the only thing you have time for is to throw your camera down and hit record before someone starts talking. So you don't really wanna be in a situation with a 1DX trying to figure out how to get your camera safe. You just wanna start shooting. Now this is the camera I'm really excited to tell you guys about. This is my newest of all of my vlogging cameras. This is the Canon EOS M5. And this little mirrorless camera actually resembles the 70D, kind of like its little brother. But after two days of shooting with it, it's much more starting to feel like its bigger brother. It's pretty freaking awesome. 
Here are some of the reasons that I love this camera so much. First, it's tiny. It's literally almost the same size as a G7X, but the image quality is like the same, if not better, than a 70D. Also, the M5 has the ability to shoot in-camera time lapses as well as 60 frames per second slow motion in 1080p. Thank you, Jesus. For the first time ever with Canon, the M5 also has five axis in-camera image stabilization, meaning even if you're like this, like the footage is smooth. Finally, I can like ride in the car and get smooth shots out the window. Like obviously the camera is super small and stealthy, even with a professional quality microphone on it, like you can take this thing in anywhere. Take the microphone off, it looks like you're like someone's grandma snapping a picture for a Christmas card. On the 70D, the screen flips out to the side, so you're constantly looking over there and it looks weird. On the G7X, the screen flips up top, which equally looks weird looking up there all the time. But on the M5, the screen flips down. And a lot of people don't like that because they say it gets in the way of tripods and things. But if you're filming like this and you look down at yourself, it doesn't look like you break eye contact with the lens. How, how incredible is that? So like right now, if I wanted to check my framing, I'd have to go like that and all of a sudden that'd look weird because I was over here. But now I could go like that and you didn't even see a difference. Watch. Can you see my eyes are moving? Like barely, right? It's passable, it's passable. Finally, when people are standing behind you and they're looking in your camera screen while you're trying to vlog them, it'll look like they're looking in the lens rather than looking off to the side. I mean, that's pretty good opposed to like the 70D where for years you've had YouTubers checking themselves out every 10 seconds. You'll never have to deal with that anymore. Those days are gone. And finally, the reason that this camera works so well with me is it's super small, but with an adapter, I can use all of my Canon L series and Cinema Prime lenses. Literally any lens that I bring in my bag for my 1DX, I can also have on this camera and that severely cuts down the amount of stuff I gotta bring with me. All in all, this camera is freaking amazing. Remember what I said in the beginning of this video though, the M5 as well, there is no such thing as a perfect camera. This camera I've only had for a few days, I will keep playing with it, I will see if there's any bugs and I'll let you know. But so far, it's doing pretty well. So finally in our lineup is the smallest camera of the group. This is the Canon G7X Mark II. It's a very small pocket point and shoot sized camera. Uh, it's actually used by a lot of your favorite YouTubers like Jake, Logan, Paul use these, Joey Graceffa, Alfie Days, they're all on this guy. It's a great camera, like I said, and you get good pictures. It's definitely like better than an iPhone. But there's something about this camera. Do you see how small it is? And you can't change anything and it's super small and I'm never really too creative when I carry this camera. I usually just vlog my friends like this and then put my camera away in my pocket. I'm never doing time lapses or cool, cool intros and stuff. That's never on this camera. It just doesn't feel right. There's a huge possibility that this might be the perfect camera for you. If you were just starting out and vlogging, you're in a small town and it's something that you're doing for fun, there's like a 90% chance that this is the camera for you. So let me go ahead and outline some of the great things that this camera offers and then we'll contrast it with the things that this camera lacks. This camera is so small that you can just put it in your pocket and literally forget about it until something happens, grab it, take it out, and start filming all within a matter of seconds. In terms of like portability, usability, this is by far the quickest, easiest camera to always have with you and always be shooting on. So it has a built-in lens and you can't change it out. The lens is basically a 24 to 70 millimeter, 1.8 to 2.8 maximum. There's good and bad to lenses being built in. Obviously the bad, you can't change them out and you can't get like really specific if there's a certain type of shot you want. But because there is a built-in lens, they're able to make it super fast. So this lens's aperture is between 1.8 and 2.8, depending where you're zoomed in. And if that means nothing to you, it's really good in low light, especially for a small camera. This camera as well has in-lens stabilization. It's not the five axis in-body found on the M5. It's a different image stabilization. It's okay. It's pretty good. Um, it makes your shot smooth, but sometimes it does do this weird repositioning thing but it's pretty good. It's a lot better than not having it. I mean, in terms of shooting on a 70D or this, it's a lot easier to shoot on this than a car. So this camera, just like the M5, can shoot in-camera time lapses as well as 60 frames a second in 1080p, which is huge. So this camera, you can shoot slow motion, you can shoot time lapses, you can vlog on it. So technically, this could be, this and the M5 could be all around vlogging cameras. And then the last thing that's pretty good about it is the audio. They made the mistake of putting the audio microphones on top so that if your finger's on top, it mutes what you're saying, or if you're in a windy place, the wind going over the top of camera makes it like whoosh. But the audio is passable. 
But that also brings us to the bad things about the camera because there's no microphone jack, so the passable audio, not good audio, the passable audio is the only audio that you have access to because there's nowhere on this camera to plug in a microphone. So you can see as you start getting more professional why a camera like this might not work. You might want better audio, but all of a sudden that means you have to get a completely different camera, not just a microphone. Another unfortunate choice is the screen flips up. Uh, that's a good thing and a bad thing. For good reasons, you can see what's behind you, you can frame yourself, but again, you're looking above the camera and you're like lifting your face up like this and look at the angle like this. I can like fake some form of attractiveness. When I look up there, there's no fake in anything. Like that's just up uphill. You don't go uphill. So that's why I like that the screen goes down on the other one. Biggest thing to me is it doesn't have an interchangeable lens. So I'm stuck on this 24 to 70, which for me doesn't work. When I think of shots, when I think of things I want to film, I think by the lens I'd shoot them on. I'm like, oh, I need an 85 for that. Or give me a hundred mil macro so I can get this. And like, if I don't have that, zooming in till it looks right just doesn't work for me. So my, one of my biggest things was interchangeable lenses, which is what kicked this one way out of the runnings. There you go. So basically that's the good, the bad, the ugly, and everything vlogging cameras from me. To properly wrap this up, over the last eight months, the 70D was my go-to vlogging camera for life and home. The Canon G7X is something that I used when I was in intimate situations with my friends, parties, or maybe like a wedding or restaurant. And then once I got my 1DX Mark II, it like replaced my RED camera and became the camera that I shoot all of my cinematic intros, slow motion, and films on. I dropped the camera once and it really scared me. And from there on out, I was way too hesitant to ever vlog on this again. And I've vlogged completely on all three of those cameras. Like I've used the G7X for multiple weeks, only that camera. I've used the 70D for multiple weeks, only that camera. And same with the 1DX. However, I do have to say now with the Canon EOS M5, I'll still carry my 1DX for cinematics, but for talking to camera, for vlogging, for lifestyle, this might genuinely be the perfect camera. It's cheap, it's lightweight, it's reliable, it's got good image quality, it's got good sound, it's got a flip down screen, slow motion, time lapse like. So now that you've watched this video, I'm kind of hoping that you can start to see why there is no perfect camera and why every camera kind of has a job and a job it does well. So that's the rundown. It's just important to remember that it's not about the gear you're shooting on, it's about the story you're trying to tell and how much passion you're willing to put into that project. I wanna thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, if you learned something from it, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below if you have a vlogging channel, if you have a channel, as well as what camera you shoot on. And as always, I love you guys very much. Consider subscribing. I make new videos every single day. And uh, also, if you guys want to see me do more videos like this about the gear, gorilla pods, speakers, microphones, all the editing stuff, whatever you want. If you guys want to see some like filmmaking tutorials or product reviews on stuff from me, please let me know down below in the comments as well as hitting the like button. And as always, I will see you beautiful people tomorrow with a brand new daily vlog. Have a great day. Peace out.